What if instead of rotating a curve around a horizontal axis, you want to rotate it around a vertical axis? In this video, we will both answer that question and do an example. Conceptually, what we do when we have a, a vertical axis is pretty straightforward. Let's remember, first of all, how we dealt with horizontal axes. We drew vertical rectangles and the distance between the axis of revolution and the curve became the radius of a cylinder and our integral ended up being the integral from A to B with a pi out front of a radius, this radius squared dx. If we are now taking a curve and rotating it around a vertical axis of revolution. Now, as I say, it's conceptually the same. We create horizontal rectangles now from the axis to the curve. And this distance will be a radius. And the volume of the solid of revolution is still with the integral of the radius squared dy now instead of dx. We saw this same thing when we used horizontal rectangles to find areas. So in particular, this radius has to be in terms of y. And these limits of integration are y values from y equals a to y equals b. Now that we've stated the idea, let's dive right in to an example. In particular, let's find the volume of the solid formed by rotating the curve y equals one divided by x from x equals one to x equals two about the line x equals one half. And at this point in our career, we probably know more or less what this curve one over x looks like. But let's go ahead and take a look at the curve. We see here in red the curve y equals one over x from one to two. And we see this dotted line in blue, the line we are rotating around. 
Here's a copy of that picture. What do we need to complete this problem? We're using horizontal rectangles now. We need this radius. And our limits of integration have to be in terms of y. So we need this lower bound and this upper bound. Before we do anything, just like we did when we were looking at areas with horizontal rectangles, let's rewrite this so that instead of y being in terms of x, we have x being in terms of y. This is going to help us find the radius x equals one divided by y is the distance from x equals zero to this curve. In other words, one divided by y is the length of this line segment. And of course, it includes stuff we don't want, this little piece here. And this little leg line segment has a length of one half. So if this distance is one divided by y, and we don't want this one half to be included, then the radius should be one divided by y minus one half. So good, we are progressing. The volume is pi times the integral from something to something. Over the radius squared dy. From what to what? Well, y equals one divided by x. This lower bound happens at x equals two. When x equals two, y is one half. And this upper bound occurs at x equals one. When x equals one, y equals one. So there's our integral. And now let's just see if we can compute this without too much fuss. Writing integrals is easier than actually computing them, as we know, but let's foil this out. 1 over y squared minus 1 half times 1 over y minus another 1 half of 1 over y. One half squared, or I should say negative 
one half squared. And now we'll take the antiderivative. That's, there we go. One over y squared is y to the negative second. So we'll bump that up to a negative one. And we'll also put a negative sign out front so that when this negative one comes down, if you take the derivative, it will cancel with this. The antiderivative of one over y is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of y. The antiderivative of one fourth is one fourth y. Evaluated from one half to one. Stick one in here, negative one, the natural logarithm of one happens to be zero, plus one fourth times one. Unfortunately, when you stick in this one half, things become uglier because the natural logarithm of one half is not a nice number, it's irrational. You could, depending on your personal inclinations, I usually get a decimal approximation when I see something like this. You could leave the pi alone and combine all your rational terms here to get an exact answer. I just paused the video to plug this into a calculator. And I also went ahead and wrote the exact answer just for completion's sake. 